Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. September has been a summery month so far, temperatures above average, but with the autumn equinox tomorrow, are things finally set to change? Well, I'm going to start by taking a look at the short term picture. This sequence uses data from the GFS global model. It runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday, September the 24th. At the outset, high pressures continue to bring a good deal of dry weather, but the tightly packed isobars there across the north are showing windier conditions. In the short term, a weak weather front pushes southeastwards. I don't think it's going to be bringing much in the way of rain to southern and central counties, but it will bring cloudier skies and perhaps just the odd spot of rain through Thursday. That clears away and it then becomes quite warm again and dry across the southern half of Britain, more changeable at times in the north and the northwest in particular. It's through the weekend though, there are indications on this computer model run of things finally starting to change. This is 12 GMT, Sunday the 26th of September, and there's an active weather front effect in Scotland, Northern Ireland, and it's pushing south eastwards. The tightly packed ice bars ahead of that are showing quite windy conditions. As we go into the early part of next week, that front clears away south eastwards and it leaves all of the UK under cooler and showery conditions. We can see Wednesday the 29th of September, there's a cooler northwesterly flow covering the UK. The heaviest showers there would be in northern and western parts, probably quite dry in the south and the southeast. Just to pull out a few uh, specific charts from that sequence, this is showing forecast upper air temperatures on Friday, September 24th. The yellows and oranges covering much of the UK are showing warm air, cooler of air across Scotland. What that means in terms of the two metre temperatures that we can expect, so the ones we experience down at ground level, well, it's relatively warm as you would expect, 22, 23 Celsius, maybe 24 Celsius in parts of the south on Friday, cooler there as you head northwards across the UK. So still looking quite summery, especially in southern and central Britain. I mentioned tightly packed isobars and windier conditions there a couple of times during that animation. I'll just bring up a couple of uh, forecast wind gust charts uh, just to illustrate possible values. So this is 06 GMT, Thursday the 23rd of September. Across uh, Scotland there, gusts of between 40 and 50 miles an hour. Breezy further south, but less windy generally. Moving forwards to 15 GMT, Saturday the 25th, windy again in the north there, gusts of between 30, 45 miles an hour perhaps. Once more, breezy as you head further south, but not really particularly windy at all. But by Sunday the 26th, as that more active weather front pushes south eastwards, the strongest winds do start to affect southern and uh, central Britain. Here the forecasts are off showing 30, 35, 40 mile an hour gusts on Sunday. So I think not desperately windy for the time of the year, but certainly in southern and central regions, if this is correct, it will feel, it will be noticeably windier than it has been uh, for much of the month so far. I think in terms of rainfall, it's quite interesting to take a look at the GFS snapshot charts. The one on the left is for days 0 to 5, and it's, it's showing accumulated uh, rainfall through that period. You can see there there's virtually nothing in much of uh, southern and eastern Britain. It's really the northwest where the wet or very wet conditions are. Over 60 uh, millimeters, millimeters of rain being forecast in parts of western Scotland. The chart on the right, which is for days 0 to 10, again shows a focus of the wet conditions being in the northwest. But by that time, all virtually all of the UK has seen at least a little rain. But again, it's important, I think, to stress that if this is correct, even during days 5 to 10, there will not be a great deal of rain in much of southern and eastern Britain. I think the what this is showing is several millimetres being produced by the weather front, which clears southward, southeastwards through Sunday and Monday. But then 
not a great deal more uh, being added to those totals in the way of shower, from showers in the south and east of Britain. The showers, as I mentioned, would really be affecting the west and the north. So that is just one run. And I just wanted to quickly also uh, show the Canadian model through the same time period. Step through this one quite quickly. It shows something a little bit different as we go through the first weekend. You can see it's, it's, it's again, it's a more changeable picture in the northwest, but by the end of Saturday, the weather front's further in the Atlantic, it's further away from the UK than it was on the GFS model, and it really struggles to push eastwards. In fact, it stays dry across central and eastern parts of Britain uh, through the weekend into Monday, and it's only really during Tuesday and Wednesday on this particular uh, computer model run that that weather front manages to push across the UK and introduce that more changeable or unsettled theme. So it is highlighting a good deal of uncertainty there, the difference between the GFS and the Canadian model. So that's looking at two model runs. How do the other deterministics stack up against each other at the end of the first week? Just to recap, this is the GFS. You can see there's a, quite a deep Atlantic trough there moving across the UK. That's bringing the cooler and showery conditions to all regions, although as I say in the south and the east, it would probably be mostly dry. The Canadian model, that was the second animation. You can see here, high pressures staying closer to eastern parts of the UK, and those weather fronts were really struggling to move eastwards, although they did get there by this point. The German ICA model also looks significantly different. This has high pressure still continuing to dominate there from the southwest. It's really the northwest where the more changeable weather would be most likely. If this is correct, still potentially quite a summary uh, feel to things across much of the UK. The European ECM model, this one's a little bit like the Canadian. It's got high pressure there to the northeast, still having a good deal of influence, and those weather fronts just gradually pushing eastwards. And finally, the UK Met Office global model. This has uh, high pressure there across the south and the east with the changeable um, and unsettled conditions steadily pushing southeastwards, I think, through. Uh, through the weekend and the early part of next week. But again, maybe a little bit of uncertainty about just how much influence high pressure would have through, through the second half of the first week. So by the end of the first week, most of the deterministic model runs are showing a transition to a more changeable or unsettled pattern across the UK. But there are significant differences between them, therefore forecast confidence is already low. Saying that, what are the prospects for week two? Well, as usual, I'll take a look at the ensemble data to try and identify the trends and probabilities rather than specifics. Starting with the 16-day GEFS plot for London and southeastern England. Across the top are forecast upper air temperatures. The thick black line there shows the 30-year average. At the beginning of week two, a lot of the individual runs in the ensemble are below that thick black line. So quite a cool upper air profile being shown here. The ensemble mean, which is the purple line, actually stays below the thick black line for much of the second week. It's only from about the 3rd of October that it climbs above it again as more warmer runs come back into the mix. I think, therefore, week two, rather cool upper air cover, covering uh, southern England for much of the time. Rainfall. Well, across the bottom here, it's completely dry to begin with, as I've already discussed. A few spikes appear from the 27th of September, but not amounting to a great deal at all. Through the second week, some bigger spikes show up and there are more of them. Remember that each spike is an individual forecast of rain from one of the runs in the ensemble model at that given time. I think what this shows is a greater risk of rain uh, 
through week two than there has been recently, but it's not a particularly wet picture by any means, and I think there would still be quite a lot of dry periods through that second week, if this is correct. Jumping up to the northwest, to Glasgow, I'll not talk about the upper air temperature profile because that's very similar to the London southeastern England one, but there is a significant difference in terms of rainfall. Far more spikes show here, and there are some very big ones indeed continuing through the second week. To summarise, it's a wetter picture than in the southeast. The potential for heavy rain at times going through that second week, so into the early part of October. Taking a look at the two metre temperatures, 16 day data table here for London. At the start of week two, columns are mostly the light orange, so maximums of 16 to 20 Celsius, cooler than it has been recently. And for the first several days of the forecast period, the amount of yellows increases and it becomes dominant. Those are runs going for 11 to 15 Celsius. I think this just highlights those that cooler upper air profile which the uh, line graph was showing being reflected to an extent at least down at the ground level. So possibly becoming uh, significantly cooler in the south than it has been for much of September. Later on there, the amount of light oranges starts to increase again. So most of the runs going back into the 16 to 20 Celsius category, perhaps that fits in quite nicely with the uh, warming trend in the upper air profile, which showed from about the 3rd of October. Jumping up to Glasgow to see the two meter temperature data table. Um, the yellows are dominant throughout, so 11 to 15 Celsius, not a great deal of change as we go through the second week. Um, so I think temperatures there are probably close to maybe a little bit below the average for much of the, of, of the time. Uh, rainfall, well, I looked at the line graphs, but just to use the data tables here to break out the individual runs more clearly, London, what we can see through the second week is quite a lot of runs going for dry conditions at the given time. The light grey shows completely dry conditions. Dark grey shows small amounts of rain at that time, time step, with the purples, blues, greens, yellows going for more significant rain. As I say, this shows the likelihood of some rain through the second week, but it's not a particularly wet profile. Comparing it to the Glasgow one, there is a little bit of light grey in the columns, far less though, still quite a lot of dark grey at each, at each time frame, so quite a lot of the runs going for relatively small amounts of rain, but also a lot of purple, blue, green, red, yellow, those are ones which are going for the heavier rain. So again, it's just reinforcing the message, driest in the southeast, wettest in the northwest, and in the northwest there could be heavy rain at times. Looking at the surface level pressure ensemble plot for Manchester, I think is worthwhile only because it serves to highlight the uncertainty through the second week. What it shows is a widespread of solutions developing. At the top end, individual runs are forecasting pressure around 1,030 millibars. At the lower end though, individual runs are going for around 990 millibars. The difference being that some are going for high pressure to be the dominant feature of the weather, whilst others are bringing in quite deep areas of low pressure from the Atlantic. Of course, that makes a difference between dry conditions or wet and windy ones. With that big spread, I don't necessarily think the ensemble mean is particularly useful this week, but I'll bring it up here just because I wanted to compare it to the European um, ensemble plot. So this is the GEFS, Friday, October the 1st. The 1,020 millibar lines cutting through the southern tip of Ireland and southwestern England. 1,050 millibar through Scotland and northern England. If this is correct, therefore, it's shown high pressure probably having quite a lot of influence, at least in the south. As I say, though, when you've got that wide range of solutions with some going for high pressure, some going for low pressure, 
average of the map doesn't necessarily give a representative picture. Nonetheless, comparing it with the European ECM ensemble at the same time, this has low pressure clearly been more influential. The 1,010 millibar line there is cutting through uh, the southern tip of Ireland and southern England, so low pressure probably been significantly more dominant. A wetter and windier scenario being favoured here at the beginning of October by the ECM ensemble. Before finishing with the 14 day summary, I thought I would show something just a little bit different this week. So here goes. This is the new Weather Analog Index feature, which is available on the Weather Outlook website. I've posted the link to it in the comments below. What does it show? Well, it's a form of automated pattern matching. It generates the index value, which you can see for each year, by looking at pressure patterns today across the Northern Hemisphere and comparing them with those on the same date in each year going all the way back to 1948. I'm not going to go into the details about how that value is generated, but the key thing to note is that a lower value indicates a better match. So for the last week's summary, what we have at the moment is 1960 being in position number one, 1970 number two, and 2004 in at number three. You can see the rest of the top 10 on the list there for yourselves. Now, I've added a couple of annotations, which are next to 2008. That says chilly winter. So the winter which followed in 2008 slash 2009 was rather cold. Also next to 2009, it says very cold winter. 2009 uh, slash 2010, I think was the coldest winter in the UK since 1979. I'll leave you to work out for yourself what sorts of winters followed the other years. Um, for lack of annotations there, perhaps gives you a clue. So anyway, if you think pattern matching has value, I hope you'll keep an eye on this in future, as I say, updates each day. If you don't think there's any value at all to pattern matching, then just ignore it. So coming back to the 14 day summary, week one, it's often going to be changeable in the northwest with spells of rain. In the south, it should be dry and quite warm for much of the time. Later in the week, there is a signal for the unsettled weather to begin spreading south eastwards. So there could be some rain and stronger winds pushing down across all parts of the UK, but there is uncertainty about that, especially about the timing of any transition. So week two starts with low confidence, but it's probably a more changeable or unsettled picture. But there is uncertainty about the influence of high pressure, so parts of the south or southeast may well still continue to have quite a lot of dry periods, wetter again as you head northwest. Temperatures are likely to be close to or slightly below the average for much of the week, so it's, the suggestion is that it will be cooler than it has been for much of September. So there we have it. It's uh, I think quite a mixed picture as I explained. There's a good deal of uncertainty about that transition towards unsettled weather towards the end of the first week and through the second week. The computer models really have been struggling in recent weeks. However, I hope you found this useful and enjoyable. As usual, if you did, then please, please, please hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thanks for watching now. Bye.